And the first point on the agenda is open forum. Uh, anyone has any questions or issues not on the agenda which they want to discuss? That was quick as always. Okay, there's one PR, but I don't see neither Shubham nor Tom Cooper who was looking into this on the on the call. So I guess we should leave it for next time. Uh I had a quick look just before joining the the the, the, the call. Uh, it seems yeah. that they made some changes. Maybe Shubham made some changes. So I will review uh, the PR again because uh, yeah, I was one of the people making some comments. Uh, so I will review again this one. It seems to be also failed in DCO and the build. to be some check style issues. Okay, anyone has any other PRs or issues they want to discuss? Anyone has any proposals they want to discuss? Okay, then I edit the next two points. First one is the survey. Tom, did we manage to get some results from CNCF already for it? Yes, I have got some results. Um, unfortunately, I missed their latest reply um, in my inbox. Um, so there are some bits where I'm still chasing them up for the, the like the free text answers. Um, but we've got some sort of numerical answers for like multi-choice questions, which um, I can go through now if people are interested or um, I think last time we ended up writing a, uh, a blog post just sort of going through the answers, which um, I'm happy to do again this time because I think it's, you know, it's uh, nice for people to sort of understand where they are with respect to the, the rest of the community, especially if they um, did the survey themselves. So, um, yeah, whatever you want. Should we go through it now? The answers that we've got? Yeah, maybe we can do both. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I'll, I'll definitely do the blog post. Yeah. Um, might be easiest if I share my screen rather than just reading out. Yeah, the wait, of, uh... wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. I guess it needs to be somehow allowed here. How do I do this? <sighs> share screen. Okay, can you try it now? Yes, that seems to work. Now I just have to wrestle with the Fedora 36.
sharing stuff, but I think that's it. So can you see um, LibreOffice? Yeah, yeah, I can see it, great. Good, okay, so um, the first one, which best describes your use of Strimzy. Um, most people, three quarters of people, um, are using it in production, which is obviously nice to hear. Um, and the rest of them are using it in a, some sort of uh, staging or in evaluation type environment. Um, to be honest, I guess I'm slightly surprised that nobody's using it um, locally, uh, but um, it is what it is. Um, and then question two, what version are you running on? Uh, most people here are on 121, it looks like, um, and a sort of a roughly bell-shaped curve, I guess, um, around that as a central point. But there's obviously uh, very little interest in the older versions. Um, so, you know, one sort of uh, outcome from this is I think we could safely drop support for those older versions and not affect any Strimzy users, um, this would suggest. So uh, that's obviously a really useful question to have answered. Um, how do you, oh, sorry, how often do you upgrade your clusters? Um, the top one here seems to be other, uh, which obviously doesn't really sort of shed on shed any light on sort of what the motivating factors there are, I guess. Um, but of the ones where we sort of have broken things down, um, we've got with every release version seems to be pretty popular. Um, so, you know, a, a good proportion of people are upgrading every time. Another key driver seems to be um, when Kafka is adding new features. And then after that, when Strimzy is adding new valuable features. And only a minority are upgrading um, just to pick up new Kafka versions without any features that they're interested in. Does, do those number match the previous question? Because here, like a third upgrading each version, but only like 19% are on the latest. <laughs> uh, the question two was about the version of Kubernetes, oh, Kubernetes no, we... not the version of Strimzy. Okay. So I don't think that there is a contradiction there. Maybe. So question four was about the Kafka Connect build feature. Um, and lots of people are using it, which is good. Um, but 15% of people didn't know about it, which um, I guess, you know, would be uh, not so good. Um, and, uh, you know, sort of a fifth of people are using some other process pipeline. Um, I'm a bit surprised that only one person cannot use it due to organizational policies. I yeah. expected that to be bigger. Well, I mean, one thing to say is the number of people that responded wasn't massive. So, you know, we shouldn't um, pay, you know, sort of complete attention to, uh, to these things. I think you're right. If, uh, if people have got a a strict sort of compliance department, for example, then maybe they're not allowed to answer surveys like this. Um, who knows? Just because you you mentioned the number of the people that answered, which is pretty low, it's forty one. I'm not sure if uh, we can do something better next time for gathering more people because it seems that we have a broader community, right? on Slack, on Twitter, people following our account, on the, the stars on GitHub. And then we have just 41 people answering the survey. It's not so great. I don't remember last time if it was higher or lower than this. We had 40 last time. So it's almost the same, right? Yeah. 
So I'm not sure what we can do better next time because we tweet about this, we block about this, we announce everything on Slack and then just 41 people on thousands of people following Twitter, GitHub are using it or at least are just liking Stringzy. Yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of a, a meta conversation to have. Um, <clears throat> go on, Jakob, I interrupted you. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think there's some disagreement about it. Uh, first is I would not probably pay that much attention to the things like GitHub stars. I personally use it as a bookmark to not forget the projects, uh, which I, for some reason, found interesting, but in many cases never used. So, yeah, I'm not sure how much that actually says about uh, about the number of users, but I don't know how many times did you fill some surveys for the projects are you are using. To be honest, I do it very rarely. So I don't know. I think most people will just not do it regardless of what you do. Probably the usual tricks can be used to kind of give a t-shirt to everyone who completes it. I know, for example, OPA is doing it, right? But you would need a budget for it. I wonder if also we could take the survey to events. You know, at Kafka Summit, we talk to many people using Strangely, or we could ask them in person. As if you get, uh, get input from other places, mm -hmm. reusing the same survey. Another possibility would uh, Twitter supports polls, doesn't it? I don't know for sure because I'm not a Twitter person, but we could have, you know, done a lot of this survey as a, a you know, a series of Twitter polls, which people are, I guess, a bit more inclined if they can just respond immediately. And, you know, if we sort of did one question a week or something, so people didn't feel bombarded, um, possibly that would get a higher number of respondents yeah to be honest i think that is a good idea because at least i am i i usually answer to the polls that of course i'm interested in and i see a lot of people doing the same at least when they follow i don't know bigger names or um, projects that they are interested in i think that it's a really good idea trying to to do some polls on twitter I think you can have polls in Slack as well, all that it's worth posting it there as well. Uh, there's also a place we can do is to uh, post in after uh, each GitHub issue or GitHub PR completed, we can post the link there and ask them to ask non-maintainers non to uh, uh, to fill in the survey. So they might have more feeling about Streamzy and have more, yeah, they are more willing to fill in those survey and questions. Any more thoughts about that, or should we just move on to the, the remaining? No, numbers? I was just adding that, of course, uh, uh, using the, the, the way that Luke was suggesting or using Twitter or using Slack with Paul, it means that anyway, we have to track on ourselves, I guess, the results and because we cannot leverage the help from CNCF. Yep. So it's something to take into account anyway. Well, I don't think it's that hard to have a shared spreadsheet oh, yes, like yeah, this, yeah. right? Yeah. By the way, yeah, I, I like the idea of using these three ways. And I guess that we can get more than 41 people answering, to be honest.
I don't know. I'm not convinced about that, but worth trying, definitely. Yeah, you know, six or nine months time, just sort of try a one of one of these things, and maybe a couple of them, and just sort of see what response rate we get, and if it's significantly more, then we can think, okay, that's a, a better way of of doing it. Yeah, I think that for a good... sorry, Kate, go on. I was just going to say, I think the other good thing about Twitter polls or things like that is often if you answer, you can then see what other people, you can see like what the current answers are. So often I answer a poll where perhaps I wouldn't necessarily have stopped to answer it, but I'm curious to know what other people said. Yeah, right, because you can see the results only if you answered the poll, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we have, I guess, almost uh, 2,000 followers on us, on us. Uh... On Twitter, and then if some of us uh, retweet the, the the tweet from the official streams account, I'm sure that Kate has a lot of followers. For example, and yeah, Jakub, me. So we can and Mikael, we can share uh, across more other people, right? Okay, shall we uh, move on with the numbers? There's only a couple more. Um, so we asked about the feature gates as a, another sort of recent um, addition uh, to sort of how Strimzy works. Um, and I guess the interesting thing here is that uh, about half of people didn't really know about them. Um, so I think that is uh, suggests that we need to do a little bit more work to sort of raise awareness of how people can uh, use them to try out experimental features, especially, you know, when we've got a good uh, number of people who are using it in a, an evaluation environment, for example. Um, seems that there's a, a bit of a, a disconnect there, possibly. I don't know. I think it's actually quite good if half of the people knows about them and uh, half of them uh, and kind of one quarter of the overall respondents is willing to give them a try. If you look, for example, at how the, the features are advertised around Kubernetes, it seems to me that most of the stuff is really advertised to the general user population when it moves to the to what corresponds to our beta stage and it's enabled by default. So yeah, I think this is actually a pretty good result. I guess an advantage if more people were aware of them is if there are people who do keep up to date with the latest version, if people know about the feature gates, they can perhaps be early sort of testers and then it gets better exposure in terms of people trying out the features and giving feedback on them. Yeah, I think it's a question of how you raise awareness because I don't think a blog post about feature gates themselves is, you know, particularly interesting at this point. But if we started, you know, sort of blogging about things which people can try out and it, you know, obviously consequently talk about, you know, well, in order to try out this sort of experimental feature, you need to enable this feature gate. Um, that would probably, you know, result in this number rising over time. Sorry, not rising, falling over time. <laughs> Okay, and then we have a few questions which are about ranked answers. So um, we've got one about sort of sources that people use for problem solving. And so I think this is in priority order. So one is like the most helpful and seven is the, the least helpful, or I guess eight is the least helpful, but anyway, you get the idea. So, you know, people overwhelmingly seem to appreciate the documentation 
um, which I don't think is a surprise because we we get regular feedback um, about the the quality and breadth of the documentation. Um, so the blog posts seem to be quite popular as well. Um, a little bit more of a spread, I guess, on the uh, the YAML files on GitHub. Um, I guess that's not entirely surprising because they tend to be sort of quite specific um, and we don't provide examples for absolutely everything. Um, so yeah, that sort of seems to, to fit. And the mailing list, again, doesn't seem to be um, seen as a, a source for help. But again, I don't think that's surprising as a community. Um, we have a lot of people sort of asking us questions on Slack and GitHub discussions. So the mailing list tends to be used a lot more for announcements. So Slack, there's a bit of a, a spread there. Some people obviously sort of find it really helpful. And then it's kind of a bit bimodal, I guess. Some people are sort of finding it less helpful. Um, GitHub discussions, not as popular as Slack. Um, still you know um, quite relevant not many people are reading the source code well you know that's not surprising reading source code is always harder than uh, document you know sort of documentation and other sources of help and I guess it's a little bit surprising that the YouTube channel um, is not so popular uh, maybe that's because people aren't aware of it um, so maybe that's an avenue to try there. What do people think? But... Well, to, to be honest, uh, here we are talking about solving issues, right? I, I think that our streams channel has great content, mostly from Jakub, but it's most about uh, explaining how things work, the new features coming. So it's not about how to fix an issue or things like that. So I guess, I hope that that is the reason why. So the YouTube channel maybe is popular, but for other reasons, not for fixing and solving issues. Because this question was about uh, what you do when you have to solve the issues, right? And I Good guess point. that the, the YouTube videos are not helpful for that. So I guess one question I have is, should we use blog posts to promote the YouTube content a little bit more so that people know about it? Yeah, maybe yes. Even if Jakub is uh, always creating uh, in the last times blog post for the last videos, right, Jakub? Well, sometimes a few weeks later, but <laughs> like yesterday, but yeah, in general, yes. But actually, I think the, the YouTube channel has over 500 subscribers, which to me doesn't seem that bad. But I agree with Paolo, like, we ask the question about solving the issues and i don't think we have any content on the youtube channel to solve the issues like we have content there to learn about new things for example but not about solving the issues so yeah I guess in hindsight, we, we could have split this question in two, couldn't we? One was about learning and the other was about problem solving. Um, and it would be reasonable to expect different answers to those two different questions. Yeah, we can also, if you want to improve this, then I'm sure you can make videos about kind of guiding the users through how they might solve some common problems and so on, if you would want to kind of improve this position. Mm -hmm. Would we want a, a dedicated page for videos rather than uh, introducing them through the blogs? We actually have that as well, Do but we... it's maybe a bit lost. Oh, is it one of the symbols? No, it's oh, no, uh, close to the YouTube. It's under the documentation. I can share the link in the chat, but uh, oh yeah, it's yeah. a bit hidden how to get there. To be honest, yeah, just found it. 
it's if you go to the documentation page there's the streams resources band and that links to the documentation archive to the quick starts and then to the presentations mm -hmm. But these are links to presentations for conferences and things like that, not to the videos that you mostly post. The, right? Actually, everything. So there are links to the videos, there are links to the conference videos, links to the conference. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, right. I see now the craft. I'm actually one. not sure we have any, any talk without the video, but but in general, it kind of mix everything and you can add everything to that but i link there the youtube things as well i for example don't link like the what's new in streams it's linked there just as a video series and it's not uh, they don't link every single episode i don't think that makes that much sense for example yeah the only thing is that this page seems to be kind of hidden be out behind the log path to follow so documentation and then scrolling unless you notice this as paolo man, paul mentioned uh, there is a, on the top banner there is the link to youtube the last one on the right hand side well that goes to youtube directly yeah Okay, and uh, the last one that we've actually got answers for is uh, about blog topics. Um, so, unsurprisingly, uh, introductions to Strimly, Strimzy features and, you know, sort of best practice, you know, how to use stuff are really popular. Um, real world case studies, you know, I think there's probably more we could do there because I think they could be pretty popular as well. Um, and integration seems to be quite popular. Not much interest at all about sort of roadmaps or how to contribute, um, and very little interest in broader Kafka subjects. So people, you know, clearly see Strimzy very much in the sort of the Kafka on Kubernetes, and you know how we can how we can make best use of Strimzy and how we can maybe sort of integrate with Strimzy, but. Um, not sort of much outside of that at this stage. That's interesting because the blog posts about tuning the Kafka consumers and producers seemed quite popular. Yeah, that's true. Based on the, um, the analytics that we had, that seemed to those did seem to be pretty popular blog posts. Yeah, uh, I also don't know the analytics, but Paolo's blog about. Uh... Uh, logs and segments, but that was very popular as well. But maybe, maybe not popular the... with people that answer the survey. Maybe that's it's a sampling problem. Yeah, maybe it's a uh, it's search engine problem, or I'm not sure the problem is the right term, but. Maybe it's not something the general Strimzy community is interested in, but maybe it's something what through other sources like search engines and and I don't know, Twitter retweets outside the Strimzy community have driven the popularity, but it's not necessarily kind of the core Strimzy users. But if that's the case, I think that would still be worth Doing yeah, some bad content to attract people <laughs> to a project. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, right? But that can be an explanation. Yeah. Okay, and the remaining three questions were all free text. So at the moment, we've not been able. To to um, get the actual text responses to those. We've just got 
an idea of the numbers. So it looks like there is quite a lot of stuff to glean uh, when CNCF are able to provide that. But as I mentioned at the start, um, because I missed the email, I've only today um, asked them uh, how we can get that text data. So um, hopefully we'll, they'll be able to provide that in the next few days um, and we'll be able to dig in a little bit to those things, possibly in a, a future call. But we can already see that 50% or more of the people skip it, right? Which is expected, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously more effort to write a, uh, yeah. a text answer. And, you know, from the experience last time, some of those are quite helpful and some of them not really helpful at all. Um, so, yeah, it, those are always a lot more sort of difficult to interpret, I guess, and difficult to sort of um, to action. But I think the the effort and time that we took to figure out exactly what questions to ask and how has been really helpful. I think, you know, we've got more insights from this time around than the first time we did it, um, just based on the, the conversation that we've just been having. Um, so more actionable insights, I guess, as well. Yeah, that was great, Tom. So thanks for sharing these results. And one thing that I was wondering if, uh, if we want to approach uh, what we said about using Twitter polls or something like that, if uh, it's okay starting from these questions so that we can add more population maybe to the one for the survey, or we want to use different questions. I, I also don't know how many item you can put in twitter polls i don't know if there is a limit or not paolo we advertised the survey on twitter so i wonder if you start feeding there the same questions it will be quite hard to understand how much of the answers are yeah overlapping. from the same people and how much of them are new so yeah to be honest i would not I would not start with the same questions. I mean, if you if you have some other questions, I, I think it's totally fine to start now and not wait for another six months before before doing that. But I wouldn't probably do the same questions. Yeah, I agree. But I think there is a, an interesting point there in that when we've got questions which you know, we've seen work, then asking the same question repeatedly over time gives us sort of obviously sort of longitudinal type insights as well as point in time insights. So, um, yeah, in, you know, six or 12 months time, uh, we can ask the same question again. And obviously, the, when we ask it in a different venue, then it's not entirely, you know, as, as comparable as we might like. But I think as we sort of iterate going forward, um we can uh, just get get better at this i think we've already learned a lot compared with the, the first survey so i'm optimistic that yeah when we we do it again we'll get a little bit more of a an idea about answering some of the, the questions that we're interested in okay Tom, I was wondering if I create a publicly accessible spreadsheet on Google Docs, do you think you can copy the results there so that we can link it from the meeting minutes? Yeah, no problem. Okay, I will I will do it afterwards and send you the link. Uh, and one more thing, so actually before the survey already, we wanted to talk about the Kubernetes versions we support. So I guess we should get back to it at some point. Do we want to do it now or do we want to give everyone time to think until next time about the survey results and then get back to it next time?
I think probably get back to it next next time. Okay, so just a quick note: uh, if we support only one nineteen and earlier, it would allow us to drop the support for the older ingress and events resources which we have there. And then the other deprecated thing are the pod disruption budgets, but the, the V1 version was introduced only in Kubernetes 1.21. So 1.19 and 1.21 seem to be the versions where if we place the border on what we support there, that's where we might gain something out of it in terms of removing some old code and so on. Yeah, I mean, 119's got 14% and 120's got 21%. So it feels like it would be a little bit early to say that we only supported back to 121. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Anyway, so let's think about it and get back to it next time. Okay, anyone has anything else to the survey? If not, then the next topic is uh, KubeCon North America. I think this is at this point more about the uh, maintainers but anyone i assume we want to do the virtual project office hours as as always from the options we have yeah i mean you know we we normally get a reasonable attendance and you know the people that come seem to find it useful so and it, it's you know it's not a lot of preparation yeah so <clears throat> Anyone volunteers to take care of it and do the preparation and so on? From the maintainers, I mean, I think that's the, that's the limitation factor there by CNCF. Well, I, I, I did that, I guess, last two times, but I'm fine to take this again if you want okay yeah sorry but Do i you... had to pick a delivery so i don't know it's uh, the first item that you were talking about for kubecon the office hours right yeah yeah so it's the usual stuff do you have the email with the from from team about yeah i the... think so that was something that i was going to raise in Matienzo, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, yes. I don't remember what's the deadline for the office hours. There is the project benefits page. So deadline seems to be August uh, 12, and it's in North America. So I guess that, uh, yeah, I will pick uh, one day and date and time as soon as possible, because you know, it's uh, first come first served to avoid to, to do this time late in the evening for us in Europe. Yeah, I think you need to first, register for the yeah. office hours in general and then later they will send some email about about the time slot yeah 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 i i will do that right after the call for those who don't know it's in october i think 24 till 28 or something like that yeah i just brought up the page those are the dates good memory Okay, thanks, Paolo. Appreciate yeah, it. thanks, Paolo. Uh, anyone else 
Anything else to keep on? Anyone has any other business which is not on the agenda? In that case, I guess that's it for today. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, folks. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.